you see the destruction, the amount of destruction, you would say there should be more than 200 killed people and uh, thousands of injured people. The closest area around the port is actually inhabited by Christians. People used to come from the mountains to work and uh, stay around the port because it was a way to gain their uh, living. And little by little, they created their own uh, streets, their own uh, areas. The way the blast went off, it was directed toward this area. Each one has a story how he or she was saved, how they left the place where they should have been, like pushed by someone, and they were saved from being killed or injured. They feel, all of them, that a miracle happened. Two days following the blast, people were thanking God, first of all, that they are still alive. And also they were hurt because they lost loved ones and their homes. After that, people started asking the question, the evident question, why? Why is it happening again? When is it going to stop? Because they had enough, they're tired of this. And the explosion, it was the cherry on the cake. The explosion was so near. 500 meters, we are in the red area in the red line of the explosion. Everything was damaged in Beirut. And our hospital too. We heard the cry of the patients and staff. No electricity, no elevators. So we took the stairs and went down. We saw one of our nursing laying at the ground. She hit her head against the wall and she died instantly. Suddenly we saw all the area came to take care of them in the emergency room. No more emergency room, no more nothing. I cried loudly. I told them, bring all what's left in the emergency room and try to help people outside in the road. And all that night was a dark night. Really, it was a dark night. All hope and dream lost with the fall of the hospital and the area. But I heard a voice in my interior said, I'm here. God is here. God will never uh, leave you alone. It's beside you. This is a poor, a needy area. The congregation built this hospital to help the people, not to make money for the congregation. Because we are in mission here. 
And really, if no convent, who take care of these poor people? Our convent is in this building, so we are so close to them. When they need us, we go down and help them, as we did in this explosion. Even during the night, the sister will help if they need more personnel. And then uh, one is dying, so they call us to give him ointment, and we pray with them. Because the presence of the sister is the presence of the God in their life. For me, I cannot work in a hospital which is not Catholic because of many ethics. For this reason, I have been here since 27 years. Our concern is the human being, is this person who, who needs to be loved spiritually, physically, morally. I had the opportunity to work in many hospitals. I insist to work in a Catholic or Christian institution where they will understand me and I will be fruitful. In Lebanon, we have three kinds of crises in the same time. A security crisis, because we are near Syria, Israel, so this world is very tensioned. Coronavirus also. And we have economical crisis. All the money people did gather all their life has been lost in the bank. These families, they did work for years and years. Now, they are extremely poor. People are suffering and they are feeling lonely. Very lonely. Now everyone is in need. But what they need? Essentially, a human being needs a presence. The presence of God. And you can reflect the presence of God when I am in crisis. If we say many words, it doesn't serve to anything. What can serve is to be concretely present. These people need us. This explosion came in a time that our country is facing a lot of challenges. Even me, I find myself in a, in a big face crisis, hope crisis. Because it was so hard, words can describe this. I remember my patron, Santa Teresa, who said, even in the dark tunnel of faith, I know you're here, Lord, even I don't feel you, but please give us your hope. And you know what? This is time that brothers and friends are for. نحن ما عشنا حياتنا مزبوط انظلمنا كثير انا بحرب لبنان كان عمري 9 سنين عشنا طفولتنا خوف ورعب وما نقدر يعني حريتنا معنا بطاطا سبعة بالبيت كان مسلحين بالطرقات وعينا على حرب وما في شيء يعني حلو غير الحرب قدامنا
وهلا كمان هيدا الجيل عم بيعيش اكثر ما نحن عشنا صار عندنا كثير خوف اكثر من قبل بكثير عم نخاف كنا عم نخاف على حالنا بس صرنا عم نخاف على الاولاد خصوصا بهالوقت هيدا اللي مرقين فيه لقى هيدا سهل لإله اكثر لانه ما كان في شيء كان لبنان مثلا على دمار كان لبنان على جوع كان على كل شيء اسهل لإله انه يشتغل بالمخدرات انا ابني هلا بالحبس وانا عايشه مع ثلاث طفال اولاد ابني وما بعرف شو بدي اقول لكم خايفه على اولاد ابني يطلعوا من غير علم مثل ما انا طلعت لانه ماني قادره اعلم اولاد ابني ما قادره اجيب لهم امن لهم اكل لا حليب لا حفاضات للبيبي ما قادره اعمل شيء وما قادره انا اعمل لهم شيء وكثير عم بتضايق براو سربوري يعني سيء كثير الوضع معنا بلبنان كله يعني مش بس علينا نحن براو سربوري هلا وضع المسيحيه انه منيح بس منه زياده بس الله يعني ويسوع معنا لا لا بولي وانا انبسطت بالكرتونه يعني المواد الغذائيه بس انا انبسطت اكثر حطوا هون مهمة يعني أكثر من الكرتونة اللي أخذناها واستلمناها إنه حدا يفكر فينا يلا بوسوا ليسوع حطوا على راسك برافو It's a little bit inconvenient for the Western secular mind to say that, you know, at the end of the day, religion still matters in this part of the world. It does. Lebanon, since independence in 43, operated more or less on the assumption that is a country that has 18 specific, distinct religious communities, and they're all recognized in the Constitution. The model is to kind of power sharing among the leading groups. The presidency, the Prime Ministership and the Speaker of Parliament are apportioned to the Maronites, the Sunnis and the Shiites respectively. was an unwritten kind of agreement, but after the war, after 1990, it became enshrined in the new constitution. The problem we face, this system has devolved, sadly, into a system of um, dividing the spoils among some of the uh, leaders of, of communities who served as warlords before, and then they became, if you will, the mega crooks that have plundered the country. Right now, President of the Republic is chosen from among the Maronite uh, Christians, Speaker of Parliament from the Shia community. 
and the Prime Minister from the Sunni community. Apart from that, all the other institutional offices are also divided. There are percentages for every one of the 18 communities. So everybody has a say. Political parties blocking one another, no real decisions were taken. If you add to this the what some people call almost endemic a system of corruption, so many small and medium industries started closing down. Perfect recipe for, for a disaster. Catastrophe is very big and many of the Christians now they are thinking to immigrate to other countries where can they find peace, they can find stability. But many Muslims would beg us to remain here in Lebanon because they need our presence. Different Muslim communities like Sunnis and Shiites, they have historical problems from the beginning there is blood and wars between each other, so they cannot communicate easily. They are more willing to talk the one to the other through the Christian line. So if we remove Christians from Lebanon, we will face most probably a similar situation that we can find today and in other parts of the Arab countries. And Sunnis and Shiites will come together to a war. The situation is not very safe, so every now and then we can find some villages where they are fighting. So our presence is really crucial. If we go out of this country, nobody is willing to remain here and to testify Jesus Christ. بأسرها تفرح بك يا ممتلية نعمة محافل الملائكة وجنا التي منا تجسد إلى وصار طفلا وهو إلى هنا قبل الدهور لأنه صنع مستودعك عرشا وجعل بطنك أرحبا من السماوات Lebanon today is a hostage country. It is a country under occupation. Who has taken it hostage? Iran. Through whom? Through the agency of their paramilitary proxies here, namely Hezbollah. Lebanon, it's still freer than all the other uh, Arab societies on many 
levels and indicators, but it is not free at this point under this kind of occupation to decide to change the system or tweak it in ways that would serve pluralism and serve freedom. The very identity of Lebanon is Western slash Arab. Iran and Hezbollah would love for Lebanon not to have any more meaningful Western connections. That's why they have been systematically blocking reforms that have been demanded by the International Monetary Fund and by France and by the United States because as conditions for helping Lebanon, they need to see some reforms. Well, they've been systematically blocked by the powers that be in Lebanon today precisely in order for China to come in and wrench Lebanon away into something else towards Iran, towards the East, towards China. We don't know. Whatever hope remains with the young generation. Even if people have decided they're going to leave, they've had enough, this was it. And many Christians are sadly in that category. The young generation really wants a future. That's a sign of hope. عمري 21 سنة طالب بالجامعة وجاي من الشمال على بيروت كرمال ساعد الشباب وساعد العالم كله المتضررة من الانفجار ونكون كلنا ايد واحدة نبني لبنان جديد ويكون أحسن مكان. هيدا صراحة شخصيا هيدا أحلى شهر في حياتي صراحة. بوعى كل يوم حمص وبدي أنزل ساعد الشعب بدي أنزل نعطي 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 أمل لكل العالم اللي من هالانفجار. الشباب عم تنزل عم تعطي امل عم تعطي عم ترد عم جرب ترد الحياه للعالم بس للاسف كثير صار عم يفكروا بالهجره صار في الاف هاجروا من كثير من رفقات صراحه هاجروا كمان وانا كمان عم فكر بالهجره اكيد لانه ما في ما بنشوف ما عم نلاقي مستقبل لنا نحن كشباب لبنان ونفرجي صوره انه لا بعد في شعب لبنان بعد في امل بهالبلد When we realized how big is this explosion, this blast, our first appeal was our use to go to give blood. To give blood to the victims, to give blood to the injured people. Then they came to support the families. They made plans, campaigns for food donation, for home appliances to donation. Then it became the time of helping families to make the restoration of the homes. We have a, a saying here that says, if you want to plan for a year, plant grain, plant wheat. If you want to plan for five years, plant trees. But if you want to make uh, plans for generations, so plant hope in the youth. And our youth, they know that they always are the pioneer of the change, the agent of the change. So they came and, and do whatever they can do, but they make the change, the real change. From my first years, I was really active and attracted to the church because I felt something really weird when we came to the church, how everyone is taking care of everyone. And I think that the joy we find it is sharing as a community. In my parish, we did like a statistic to know the situation of the families. And we found out that many of them are in need. And some of them, for the long term, they cannot continue without the support. I was thinking, what should I do? And I came up with an idea. How are you? <laughs> Welcome. So I am giving Arabic course to the non-Arabic speakers. And I have 14 students. So I am getting 500 euro per month. And I am, with this money, distributing food to the families. Oh, very good, Latina. 
So with this box, I am just giving them a brief hope that there is someone who are thinking about you. There is someone who is supporting you. Merci, tante. Some of them have medical issues. So in my life, I am really impressed by some of the priests that they told me it's not enough to just pray and like close your eyes because we look at Jesus he never let the people down so I'm raised in religious community and they teach us how to act how to to help people I am now knowing more what is the meaning to be in the church I get the spirituality of a good Christian the courage and the strength how should I act? You cannot find such solidarity between people but in Lebanon. Now, if Lebanon is lost as a message in the area, it means that fanatism is growing and when you have fanatism, people will not see the human person in front of them. What's good in Lebanon till now is that we are still able to see a person in front of us. Not his convictions, but a person that needs to be loved, to be cared for, and with whom we can live. And Lebanon needs to be preserved by the international community. The international community till now is not appreciating the true value of Lebanon. They're working politics, they're not working humanity.